Brought to you from Hana's desk. Wait, that's too violent. Remember when you learned about tangent lines in single variable calculus? Given a curve, like this, you could pick a point and find a tangent line there. A tangent touches the point there but doesn't intersect with the curve at that point, so anything that's not these. And then you learned that derivatives were just the values of the slopes of these tangent lines. In technical terms, given a function f of x that is differentiable at a given point a, you can approximate the function value to be about equal to the function value f of a plus the derivative at point a times x minus a. This is what linear approximation is, using the tangent to find the function value. Simple enough, right? Just like with tangent lines, finding a tangent plane in 3D has its rules. For a tangent line to exist, a curve has to be smooth. Similarly, for a tangent plane to exist at a point, the surface of a 3D object has to be smooth. Earlier, with the 2D tangents, we were looking at a function f respective to x, or f of x. And now we're looking at 3D. A function depends on three variables, x, y, and z. So instead of being given f of x and a point where x equals a, we have a surface function, f of x, y, z, and a point, a, b, c. But don't panic. Remember that if we had a tangent here, we have this imaginary orthogonal line that we'll call n. All we have to do is find that line n at a single point, and then use some of our calculus three tricks that we have up our sleeves to figure this out. So this line n, it's perpendicular to what would be the tangent plane at the point here. Another way to say this is that n is orthogonal or normal to the tangent plane that I named Timothy. Remember, to find this line n orthogonal to plane Timothy, you have to find the derivative of the function at this point a, b, c. So we pull out our partial derivative skills since there's more than one variable being used in this function. Pretend we did find the specific partial derivatives for x, y, and z at this point a, b, c. Let's call them fx, fy, and fc. We can put these in a vector to get that line n we were looking for. Nice! Now, what do we know about this vector n? Right, it's orthogonal to the surface at this point. So, in summary, it's orthogonal at the position x minus a plus y minus b plus z minus c. And if these two are orthogonal, we can use the dot product and, you know, wow, get a real equation with a real equal sign. So we now have this explicit formula, fx times x minus a plus fy times y minus b, plus fz times z minus c, and all of that set equal to zero. Remember, this equals zero because the two vectors are orthogonal, and the dot product of two perpendicular vectors is always zero. But this is a bit much to find. Three entire partial derivatives? And if it all equals zero, we don't really know what this tangent plane is going to look like. Let's move stuff around until we get something that gives us a function value, like f of x equals y did. We know that this function depends on all of these variables, but if we let z become a function of x and y, we get z equals f of x, y. If you move things around, you get that f of x, y minus z is equal to zero. If we take the partial derivatives with this new format, we will always get the derivative of z to be negative one, because we treat x and y like constants when finding the partial derivative of z. So then we get that the formula is fx times x minus a plus fy times y minus b minus 1 times z minus c. This c in the position function is actually f of a, b because it's z at the point a, b, c. If we take all this, we can clean things up a bit more. Wow, what a step up. Now we have that the function f of x, y equal to z equals fx times x minus a plus fy times y minus b plus f at a, b. Here, we use the lowercase fx, fy, and fz to represent that we found the partial derivatives of each variable at a given point. But if we weren't given a point, we would resort to using the implicit formula here. 
It looks the same as the explicit formula before we manipulated it to get it set to equal to zero, except that we're using capital Fs. A capital F signifies that there's a family of derivatives or a function for a derivative. This takes a little more time to solve out since you don't have numbers, you have, you know, entire functions. So just cross your fingers that you'll have a point given with your function. Linear approximation is fairly simple. It's just an implementation of tangent planes. So a curve can be approximated by the tangent line, which are points very close to P. In 2D, y is equal to f of x, where f was differentiable at point A. f of x is tangent at A, f of A, which is equal to f of A plus f prime of A times x minus A, which is equal to L of x, referencing linear approximation. But in 3D, you use a tangent plane at point P to approximate this surface for points close to P. So, in 3D, f is differentiable at, it, at a, b, instead of just a. l of x, y, instead of l of x, is equal to f, x, the partial derivative of a, b, times x minus a, plus f, y, the partial derivative, times y minus b, plus f of a, b. This is equal to the surface for points near point a, b. Relative error is equal to the absolute value of approximation minus the exact value divided by the exact value. You don't often use relative error, but it is a good skill to have. All right, so here's an example. Say you're given a function respective to x and y, that's a fraction, five over x squared plus y squared. And we're gonna use the linear approximation of the point negative one, two, to find the function value of negative 1.05 and 2.1. And remember, the reason we want to use linear approximation here is because those aren't pretty numbers and it would be easier to use linear approximation than to try to solve that out if you didn't have a calculator. Moving on. The first thing we're going to do is find the partial derivatives of each of the variables. And here they are. Nice. So now what we're going to do is plug in that point we were given, which was negative 1, 2 to find the partial derivative values at that point. And there they are. Beautiful. So now we're gonna move on to find that plane, which we're gonna call Timothy. And remember, Timothy is in terms of x and y because it's representing the z plane. So then we get this equation here. 2 fifth x minus 4 fifth y plus three. So if you plug in the point negative 1.05, 2.1 into the equation we got, you're going to find the answer 0 0.90. So if we find the actual value of the function using the original function and the point negative 1.05, 2.1, we get this answer using our handy dandy calculator. 0.907029, you get it. It was pretty close, and if you want to figure out how close it is, you can use relative error, like Tommy said, and so that would be the approximated answer minus the exact answer over the exact and we would use the absolute value of that and use it to find a percentage and it was 0.8% which is less than 1% and that's pretty good. Do we have time for another example? Uh, I don't really think so. If you still need more help on tangent planes and linear approximation, we've put the links to our resources down in the description below, so please check those out if you still need help, and best of luck with you and your Calculus 3 endeavors. Bye!